Hi there, this is a quick impromptu video on media metadata. I mentioned metadata in my last two videos, but I don't think I mentioned it in enough detail. I've read some forum posts on the subject, but I've also seen firsthand some confusion on the Family Historian Zoom group. So obviously I didn't explain that well enough in my past video, and I had to revisit it. And that's what I'm going to cover here and try and clear the subject up. If you're not familiar with the Family Historian Zoom group, I mentioned that in the outro of this video. But first of all, let's hear the difficulty in this video extract. And Paul asked if media preferences ticked, as you showed as it could, to copy the EXIF data, the EXIF data, inside the image. What is actually copied? Do you know? Because the help simply says it's the title gets copied to the title field, the comic gets copied to the note field, date to the date field, and keywords to the keyword field. That was it. So it's in there. And then if I want to see the EXIF data. Well, there's the, the date you can see already. So double click on that. I think that should work. Keywords. So you can see the, the picture note. Excellent example of Joshua Reynolds. Keywords didn't come in, interestingly. Yeah. No. I've never got the keywords to come through. That was my question. Hmm. Yeah, I've had the same issue. So you can see I clearly didn't explain that well enough in my last videos, and that's something I'm going to address here. Just think of metadata as the forward or appendix of a book. It's just containing more detail about the actual contents of that book. I need to work towards getting it into my image files, and that's of great benefit, which I'll show later. We're all very accustomed to metadata in audio files where the song title and artist come up on the playback device. The album name, track number and even the genre of the music all can be added to the metadata. So if we want a jazz night, we can easily filter our jazz collection and play only those tracks. I want to enhance my genealogy media collection with metadata and make those important files stand out on their own merit. I want the ability to search on multiple criteria regardless of the genealogy program I'm using or where those files happen to be located on my computer. Thankfully, Family Historian embraces a small subset of these tags and copies them into the media gallery for use within the project. Family Historian is the only genealogy program I know of which does this, so if you know differently, please use the comments field down below to help inform others. Don't go overboard into trying to understand metadata. There's possibly hundreds of tags available, and you can see some of them here in Adobe Bridge. You will hear acronyms like EXIF, EXIF, and also IPTC, which make up some of those available tags. Family Historian concentrates essentially on five tags, which I am going to refer to as Microsoft tags. Do read more on the subject if you wish, but don't feel restricted to the five tags Family Historian embraces. My goal is to be able to search out files, have those important notes on the back of photos transcribed into the comments, and also add my own tags and possible notes. What I don't want is to be constantly reaching out for another image program to access this metadata. We're all mostly Windows users of a Windows program, so I'm happy to work with the metadata Microsoft gives me easy access to, and it's quite sufficient for my needs. How we see and edit those tags is to right click on any file or image already in preview and select properties. If you see a different view like this and properties is not available, click on the file info. You get this right hand pane and you're using Windows Photos rather than Windows Photo Viewer. Go back to your file, right click on it and select open with. If you don't see Windows Photo Viewer here, then a Microsoft update has hidden it and you may want to think about restoring it. As Windows Photos does not offer as many tags for edit, especially the important comments tag. There's lots of available help and discussion online, so have a read and select a method which best suits your needs. A quick point about the comments field, it does not naturally accept line breaks. So let me copy this out to Notepad. There are two methods to getting line breaks into the comments field. One is to copy and paste from prepared data in Notepad or another program. Another is to hold down your shift key and press enter when you're typing in the comments field. That will also work. Look closely and you will see where the confusion arose in the Zoom meeting. Tags, which will become keywords in Family Historian, are semicolon delimited, not comma delimited. 
So what goes where? In the file metadata, the title speaks for itself, and that will transfer the family and story in its title. The subject line is conditional. Personally, I don't use it. The subject line will be imported into Family Historian Notes if the comment field is blank. The date taken will be imported into Family Historian as date. The comments will be imported into Family Historian as note. The tags will be imported into Family Historian as keywords. Naturally, we want to see this process in action. Here is the file. Family Historian is open on the media view in the background. I just drag the file and I can drop it either on the media list or the thumbnail pane. Here we are. I double click on the thumbnail and I get this view. I double click on the file in the list and I get a more detailed view. We can see the title, the date we entered and the keywords. And importantly the description of who is who in that extended family photo. Perfect. Let me look at another image, but this time of a newspaper obituary. In this case, I have transcribed the text completely into the comments field of the file and added a few tags which will become keywords. If I use the keyword filter in Family Historian and select Ammerman, here I have the image that we entered. If I do the same for Volstein, then again we drive direct to the photo or selection of photos containing that keyword. It's a great feature that Family Historian imports this important data. If you find your file metadata is not being transferred into Family Historian, then go to Tools, Preferences and select Media. This box should be checked by default. If I hit Restore Defaults, you can see it getting checked. I'm not sure that was always the default setting as I've seen a lot of users finding it unchecked, so make sure both these boxes are checked. If I were still using Roots Magic, even the latest version 10, I would need to enter all of this data manually. And I can't display any additional useful data in this panel here. Let me forget about genealogy software for a moment and jump straight into Windows Explorer. I'm located in the root of my two terabyte drive and I will search for Volstein. And there you are. If I do the same for Ammerman, I see several files which include the one we just added. Interestingly for me, there appears to be some mention of the name Ammerman in this DNA related file, so some further research for me to do later. If I search all files for the name Surgeoner, brackets BIRT, which is the file naming tag I use for birth registrations, I get a matching list. If I add William to that search, I filter down more precisely into the possible results I want. I mentioned the Family Historian Zoom group and that all of the past presentations are recorded and available to paid up members. It took me a few tries to find the snippet I showed at the beginning of this video, so I tagged the video file with the keyword problem. If I search on that, I get a bunch of matches which contain either keyword or problem, but the video is the top match. Watch the scroll bar when I prefix the search with a quotation mark, and again when I complete it with another quotation mark. Still the video is the top match. Let me have a look at the properties. Here's the keyword, but you will also notice that the comments have a timeline list copied from one of my previous videos. Let me copy this specific line and paste that into the search box. One match out of 1.57 terabytes of data, and quickly found. I would encourage all of you to make file properties metadata your friend rather than verbose and often confusing file names. File naming, especially complicated file naming, can be so difficult to replicate and remember. Large group photos can have the traditional left to right row by row names all entered in the comments and therefore be subject to searching. And that's exactly what I want from my file names and properties. One last bonus with Family as Historian. I have just opened a property box for this Agnes Vallet Armager, who was born in 1888. I click on her media tab and I'm going to drag the Smith family photo here, so attached to her, albeit attached wrongly. This is just for demonstration purposes, but look here. Agnes was born 1888. The photo was taken 1924 from our metadata entry. And Family Historian has calculated the age Agnes would have been when the photo was taken. Nice little feature.
That's it, and I hope that lifts some of the confusion regarding keywords not transferring into Family Historian. Separate those file property tags with semicolons and you won't have any further problems. I mentioned the Family Historian Zoom group earlier, and the Zoom group is a group of members who meet up. There's over 100 participants. Some of them are long-term users going back to the first release of Family Historian. Some of them are more recent members who are migrating from Legacy, Roots Magic, Family Tree Maker, etc. So they all have something to offer. Joining up just needs a small annual donation of around five British pounds. And for that, you'll get a wealth of knowledge. You can sit in and just listen on the meetings if you wish. You can participate if you wish. But more importantly, you'll get access to the wealth of past recordings, which are all there available for download and re-watching. You'll always find a subject that you're looking for. You'll see how other users are discussing and using it. So I've found it a very good group to be part of. My next plan video is a rather generic one, but it's that old question of how do I synchronize two computers, or how do I synchronize my computer with a USB drive or a portable hard drive? I do that and was forced to do that back in 2004 with my laptop. And I was asked what methods I used recently on a Groups I.O. discussion. So I'm going to share that with you because I'm just back after several weeks of traveling and it was the first thing I needed to do when I got home. Don't forget to catch up on some of these videos to the left of your screen. And if you want to get notifications of future videos that are going out, don't forget to hit the subscribe button followed by the important bell to get notifications. So look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.